Very good. So good evening and welcome to today's lecture. Our very first official lecture on uh, or in public health, we want to begin with epidemiology because of a reason. Later on, or in a very few minutes, you will see that epidemiology is actually the central science of public health. Without epidemiology, you will just be lost in public health and you are just wallowing about trying to find your feet. So it is important that we deal with epidemiology, if not all the concepts, I mean the basic concepts, so that we can find how the other disciplines or the other sub-disciplines of public health linked together. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Good. So these are questions I picked from your 85%. And um, I feel that some of them were actually true or false because if you look at the options, some of them were not really valid. In my opinion, I mean, you may disagree with me, but based on what I've seen, I think that some of them are true, false, true, false, like our question format. They are not really one in five. So let's 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 just go through some of them. Then when we look at one, we'll go and then see the concept in epidemiology. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So question one reads, or question reads, the unit of study in epidemiology is A, the individual, B, the disease process, C, the environment, D, the disease agent, the agent causing the disease, and E, the population or part of the population. What do you think? A. You think it's the individual? Yo, let's move on. Just a few ones, then we'll, we'll go to the, um, the, discussion itself or the lecture itself. Now let's see this. He said one of these statements apply to descriptive epidemiology. A, it is used to test a hypothesis. B, it is used to measure the incidence of a disease. C, it is used to prove the cause of a disease. D, the study variables are person, place, and time. E, a control group is required. What do you think? This one, let me call um, Debbie. What do you think? I think it's D. You think it's D. The study variables are person, place, and time. Yo, well, we'll find out later. Question, question. So, one of the fathers of epidemiology is Louis Pasteur, Jenna, John Snow, Lister, Bertoff. Who is here? Karen, what did you have chosen for this no. answer? Yes. John Snow, C. John Snow, because you, yes. you watch Game of Thrones, or? Not at all. Yo. Good. Then, question. In disease prevention, in disease prevention, so which of the following is true? So, pap smear is used to detect carcinoma in situ of a uh, pap smear used to detect carcinoma in situ of the cervix is secondary prevention. You think that is true? Yes. Sir. Okay. Nutritional counseling for pregnant women is a primary prevention. You think it's true? Yes. Sir. Okay. Let's go on. Placement of retarded children in an institution is primary prevention. You think it's true? It's true. I'm again, you think it's true? Okay. All right. Developmental screening of infants is tertiary. You think it's true? False. I think it's false. Okay. Um, treatment of a child with measles is secondary prevention. True. Yeah. Mm. So it seems the false thing here is what? D or? Yes, sir. So you see that in disease prevention, you don't know what they're asking for. You don't know whether it's, which of the following is true. So here is where I feel that uh, it is a true false. So this is how our 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 exam is like. We, we don't have one in five, but as I think we recently decided to introduce one in five. So you see that you have one question, but it's actually five questions and you have five marks here and it's plus or minus one. So true, false, true, false. Okay, so I don't think there's a, a real one in five question, but let's move on. We'll see why. Then, which of these is 
a food safety measure at the primary prevention or primary level of prevention. Screening of food vendors, you think it is primary prevention? Yes, doc. Aye. Hey, no. Identification of carriers. Mm. E. E, identification of carriers. Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? Let's move on. Okay. Think about it. Then the stage in natural history of a disease by which the presence of factors favor the occurrence of a disease is what? We they said social studies. Yes. So what for any answer? Come again. <laughs> Is it hmm, okay, all right. Is it not C? Okay, good. All right, all right. So, which of the following constitutes primary prevention of disease? Test x ray in a patient with chronic cough. I think it's true. No, no pap smear no. test. Pap smear test. I think it's true. Okay, oh. health, uh, health education on prevention and control. I think it's true. Yes, okay. Rehabilitation of individuals cured of leprosy. You think it's true. It's false. Surgery for the treatment of cervical cancer, you think it's true? False. Are you, you let's move on. Just a few of them and then, so a good index of measuring the severity of a short-term acute disease is cause specific death rate, five years survival rate, case fatality rate, standardized mortality ratio, proportionate mortality. What do you think? Okay. Oh, I should go back. I think someone was about to talk. So these are the very few things we'll be discussing today. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. Good. So let's 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 begin our discussion. Epidemiology. Epidemiology. So what is epidemiology and why do I say we need to know that before we attempt studying other disciplines of public health? Because although it is enshrined that it is the basic um, science of public health, in my own way, when I look at it, I feel um, epidemiology is the reason why we have other sub-disciplines of public health. And then I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I think that is. I mean, this is my own opinion. You may agree or you may disagree, but that is how I see epidemiology and how I link other sub-disciplines like environmental health, demography, nutrition, reproductive, child health, health and health systems, um, biostatistics, um, occupational health. That is how I link everything to epidemiology so that when I'm looking at epidemiology, I know where to put um health and health systems, I know where to put occupational health, I know where to put biostats, so that I can I can learn the sub-disciplines as though they were interconnected, because really, to me, they are interconnected. So what is epidemiology? Let's, let's, let's see that. What is epidemiology? So epidemiology is actually a Greek word. The word epidemiology is actually a Greek word, which is made up of two words, okay, two, so sorry, the, the word epidemiology is actually an English word, which comes from three Greek words, okay, so we have epi, we have demos, and we have logos, so epi actually means upon something, so epidemics, upon the demos, like you know, demos, is a Greek word for people. So demography, you are you are studying people, okay? Demography, people characteristics, so people. And then logos actually is scientific study. So according to the English balance, if you look at the Greek, epidemiology is studying what? People, basically, it is the people which is studying, okay? 
So it makes sense to think that epidemiology studies population, some characteristics about a population. What does epidemiology want to know? Does it want to know the, uh, um, the economy of the population? Does it want to know the IQ of the population? No, it wants to know the health related events of that population. So if we say that, you know, when I say the functional unit of the, of the kidney, you know it's a nephron, right? Yes, so. Yes. When I say the functional unit of the body, you know it's a cell. So indeed, the body is made up of tissues, organ systems. What is the functional unit? So because epidemiology deals with population, if you divide the population into very, very smaller units, the unit of study is the individual because it is the individuals that make up the population. Do you understand? Yes, though. Yes, yes though. That is why the first question we saw, the unit of study, whenever an epidemiologist is studying something, the unit of study is actually the individual. The unit is studying the population. But if you divide the population, the, the, the simplest unit you can get from the population is the individual. So the unit of study in epidemiology is the individual. It is not the disease process, or it is not the population, although the population is studied by the units. The simplest unit of study is the individual. First question explained. Now, what is the definition of epidemiology? What is the definition of epidemiology? When we say epidemiology, in a stricter sense, what do we mean? Now, did you check on Yaira? Yes, Doc. Where is she? Um, she hasn't responded to my message. Okay, all right. Epidemiology, logic, isn't it? So, the scientific study. Epidemiology, the scientific study of what are you studying? One, the occurrence. Sometimes also called the frequency. The scientific study of what? Of something, but that something we want to know the occurrence of that something. We'll move on soon. Or we'll explain that something too. One, the occurrence. Two, the distribution. Three, the determinants. So odd. The study of the odd. So you are studying, you are scientifically studying the, uh, the occurrence, distribution, determinants of what? Of health-related events. So not just diseases, okay? Anything that affects someone's health. Health-related events. And like I will explain in a very short moment, when we say health-related events, we mean what? Organic diseases but things which are not diseases, but can still affect someone's health. Like what? Domestic violence, isn't it? I'm just giving examples. Domestic violence. Road, road traffic accidents. Contraceptive use. So anything you can think of that can affect someone's health or is health related. So it is the study of the occurrence or frequency, distribution and determinants of health-related events. Now, among whom are you studying? So you, are, you see, you are studying um, uh, in what, a population. So in or among a specified population, among a specified population, over a specific period.
over a specific period. What are you going to use the outcome? After you studied it, what do you use it for? And the what? Application. And the application. of this study to prevent and control human problems. Do you see the sense in the definition? Yes, so. yes, so I have a specified group of people. Maybe I have um the 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 candidates in tutor med. I have seen that there is a health related event. Okay, so that due to the specified group of people I want to study are uh, what you guys. Now that health related event, maybe let's say malaria, the disease. I want to study its occurrence scientifically. It means that, you know, science from your GHS, science is defined as what? The method of obtaining knowledge through careful observation and experimentation. So I don't just get up and say, I think, no. It has to be a scientific study. So I do careful observation. I want to obtain knowledge. Why you guys have malaria all the time? So I just observe and then think about it, analyze it. That's a scientific study. So I am studying the occurrence of malaria, how it is distributed among you guys, and what determined whether or not you would have malaria, okay, over the period of, say, January to March. And then after I've gotten my, after I've studied and I've gotten positive results, I would want to apply this study so that I prevent and control malaria among you guys. And then use that same result and apply it to other populations that I applied this to tutor med and I saw that the malaria rates reduced so I can apply it to other populations. When I do that, I am an epidemiologist. So again, epidemiology is the scientific study of the occurrence, distribution, and determinants of health-related events, not just diseases among a specified group of people who are a population over a specific period. And after I have finished studying it, I know I have obtained knowledge because it was a scientific study. The knowledge I have obtained, I will apply it to prevent and control that health-related problem. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. So, one one thing now that you, you you define epidemiology, it is a fact, and you must you must uh, this you must understand that epidemiology is the basic or central science of public health. The basic or the basic or central science of public health is what a health and health systems, B, biostatistics, C, epidemiology, D, reproductive child health. Please, the answer is epidemiology. Epidemiology is the basic and central science of the public health discipline. Epidemiology is the basic or central science. Without it, public health is useless. Now, let's come to why I think I agree, although Prof. Kalistiko didn't, I don't remember him saying this in class, but when you think about it, you would see that everything makes sense. Now, you see, look into your book and then note the definition of the epidemiology. By the way, I should say that that, that definition was given by John M. Last. So usually when we went for Viva, and then I think now they stopped asking that question. When we went for Viva and then we were asked to define epidemiology and we'll be like, ah, or the Then we'll start. 
According to the Dictionary of Epidemiology written by John M. Last in 1988, it is the scientific study of the occurrence, distribution, and determinants of health-related events among a specified group of people over a specific period and the application of this study to prevent and control human problems. What beside it? So take note of that. It is, it is from John M. Last from 1988. Now, if you look at the definition very well, it tells it, 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 it illustrates some, some key points. One is scientific study. And I think I've already explained that. One is scientific study. The fact that you don't just get up and say that I feel like, take my point, emotional reasoning. No, scientific study. You actually carefully observe. Science is the method of obtaining knowledge through careful observation and experimentation. This definition is in KD2, science in school. So you did, you actually experimented, you observed, and then you got results. So that's why it's a, it's a scientific study. Now, when it comes to what are you studying, you are studying the occurrence of frequency. So I'm going to, I'm going to generate the other sub subtopics of epidemiology. Okay. So when you talk of disease occurrence, you want to know how how they occur in uh, populations, right? Yeah, Isn't cool. it? So this is where yeah. the topic and the epidemiology called measures of morbidity and mortality. This is where you would you would meet it. Do you know that? Do you know that subtopic? Yes, so cool. yes, measures of morbidity and mortality. Once the epidemiologist is studying the occurrence, he's going to learn or he's going to study the measures of morbidity and mortality. This is where you meet. Things like incidence rate, attack rate, which is a type of incidence rate, attack rate. You meet things like prevalence rate. Sorry, prevalence rate, I wanted to say, or I should have said. Then you meet the mortality rates like infant mortality ratio, case fatality rate, and all that. Okay? Yes, sir. Then we are told that it studies the distribution of the disease. Who are you? Uh, who are you studying again? Yes. Distribution of the disease. No. Who? Who are you studying? What is the unit the of study? The individual uh, or the population, isn't it? The population. So when you talk of disease distribution, let's say that you have uh, HIV and AIDS. Okay, you know. HIV and AIDS and her B there is the team and higher the, the northern part of Ghana. Okay, so you want to find out ah the statistics that came, they said that the Chiman had, let's say, the highest number of um hepatitis B. So why did they have it? Okay, so the distribution, you are actually describing the people who had the disease. So you are describing by what person. This distribution is described in terms of the person who had it, the time at which he had the disease, and then where he had it. Person, place, time talks about distribution. Do you get it? The yes, distribution sir. of a disease describes the, the, the characteristics of that unit of epidemiology. Who had the disease? Where did he have the disease and when? So it asks the question, who, when, and where? Are you okay? So now I am going to clean this board. Can I clean this board? No, no. Try and understand the story I'm telling you. Now, epidemiology, public health, you know, well, I, yeah, he, Thank you very much, Doc. Yo. Now, you pick the distribution. Watch something. Take me through again. The distribution of the disease. What does it talk about? Yes. 
person. person. Does something strike you here? Mm. Which other which sub discipline of public health deals with person characteristics? Which sub discipline of public health focuses on person characteristics? Really studies populations for mm. what? Which public health discipline solely or primarily uh, studies population, person characteristics? They want to know more about person, uh, the age of the person, the, the, the demography. demography. Okay. You see how demography is linked to epidemiology? Mm, yes, sir. So you see here, you have a sub-discipline linking to epidemiology because epidemiology deals with what distribution of the disease. Who is affected? As of the time, you can't say much. Now look at the place. Epidem the, the distribution is thinking that probably the place had the place had a contribution to the development of the disease, which public health discipline studies where we live. Housing. Come again. Housing. What? Housing. Which sub discipline is housing under? Not just where we live. Okay, our I mean our habitat. Like, yes. What are you saying? I can't hear you. What is this? We see, we see, we see, we see. You are doing. Pick up. I'm helping you derive it too, so that it won't be like I learned. You see, the, the main problem you have with public health is that I learn it today, I forget it tomorrow. I don't want you to do that. Just reason around it. Which which um pub, uh, which public health discipline talks about where you live and then your your surroundings? Hey. Yes. Environmental health. Environmental health. So why did the Tichiman person have, have a or why has the Tichiman people or let me see why 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 is her B very prevalent in Tichiman but not so prevalent in C Nogoku? Is is there is there a reason? Is the place contributing? Do you see that? Yes, no. So person, place, time, place, environmental health, demography, fine. Now it talks about what? So remember this, this is what? Who, when, and then where? PPT, person, place, time. Now talk about the determinants of the health related event, the determinants. So we are asking ourselves, okay, so you are telling me that uh, the, the human people had it. They, there is no particular time. They have it throughout the year. And then because we're in the human, then you are asking yourself, what determined why they had it? Okay. So this, this whilst distribution is asking who, when, and where, determinants is asking why did they have it and how? Why and how? You are telling me that hepatitis B is prevalent in Techiman. And then the people, I mean, very prevalent in young uh, young adults. The time, after the time, it happens every time. And then you, you are thinking that, yeah, the place is Techiman, fine. But if you compare this to other regions like Accra, uh, Kumase, it is not so high. So that the determinants of the health-related event, which in this case is her B, why and how did the patient get it? Why why do the human guys have it? And how do you get it? So it's like the determinants ask about the risk factors. Why did they have any risk factors? We don't know. So the risk factors and cause is answered by what? The determinants of health is that is that okay yes doc. now traditionally 
there are so many models which helps us remember the determinants of health. But the ones that you are very familiar with are the four H's, isn't it? Yes, sir. The four H's of determinants of health. Who can give me? Let me let me go. Let me let me let me go around for answers. Yeah, uh, Debbie. Yes, doc. Are you familiar with the four H's? Yeah. Can you give me one? Um, habit. Habit. So, I bet I can clean the board, right? No, yes, no. One second. Thank you, though. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why Basket, basket, basket. Oh. The habits of the patient. So we are saying that the habits, how you live, can affect your health, can determine your health, isn't it? Yes, doc. Thank you. Now, can you think of any sub-disciplines which, which is related to this? Think about it. So you see, in, in, in public health, eh, the reason why you, you have to be doing this, like I have to be answering my question is that any question can come. So you have to reason it out. You, you, don't, have to, you, you don't have to give the answer because you have been taught. It is social studies. Look at the various disciplines in community health and look at which one will fit habits. Anybody? 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 Communicable. Come again. Communicable disease. No, but communicable disease is, is under... Um, epidemiology and then it doesn't talk about your habits but it's under epidemiology so we won't take that there is no sub there is no sub discipline called communicable disease what i said was that i noticed a trend in the question so i'm going to treat um communicable disease as though they were not with um epidemiology but it is under epidemiology so so far we've been able to generate a demography and then environmental health where they where they link to um epidemiology who else can think of anything please quickly 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 go through the various disciplines of community health and then think about it yes akosia 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 yes dog Yes. What do you think? Please, I habitat is part. Habitat is part. We have not gotten to habitat. The habit of the yeah. patient. The habit. Oh, okay. Demography. No, demography cannot talk about your habits. It talks about your characteristics. We've already said it. I'm talking, I have I'm, I'm thinking of non non communicable diseases. No, oh, it's under epidemiology. Epidemiology studies what? Health-related events, isn't it? So diseases are also health-related events. Yes, sir. I won't spoon feed you in Come health or else. When you go and then you are asked the question to apply, you get stuck. That's what I don't want. And um, Kojo? No, I have no idea. So. Uh, um, Kudia? When you are when you are um 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 in when you're at home, let's say you have completed medical school, you passed your MDC. What do you do? I mean, what what are some of the habits you're engaging? Don't you go to work? Yes, sir. Which which mm -hmm. which which um occupational help? But are you following what I'm doing? Yes, though. Silent yes, majority, are you sure? Yes, though. I want you to be able to understand this thing, not to chew. No. 
Because the things to chill, no? They have not yet come. Then you mentioned habitats. Which, which um, epidemiological, I mean, which public health discipline talks about habitats? Think housing. about it. It's house, you, you keep saying housing. You keep saying housing. <laughs> housing is not... Healthy housing. Housing is not a sub-discipline. It's under something. What is it under? Environmental health. It's environmental health. Yes, sir. So your environment, so if your habitat affects your health, then we have to study about your environment. That is how, how come we have environmental health. Do you see that? So do you see yes. why epidemiology is the central science of public health? What is the next... What is the next uh, um, H? Heredity factors. Heredity. Unfortunately, I didn't see anything, any subdiscipline that talks about heredity, so I skipped. The next H is what? Health service. Yeah. Health service, Ben. Health, Ben. Services. How Ben. Services. Hey, and it's helpful for me a young pump a community health and power. Mr. A mumpet, why? When you say a boring, but more than mumpet a crack, why? A health day. A health day. Is a health care? Health related services. Health related services. A, a health gain, strawberry, a health gain. So I know it's health service, sir. No, it's health systems. Hey. Mm. <laughs> it's health and health system. Do you see that 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 major that major uh, subdiscipline in come health? So you see that we've generated this. I think this is the fourth, and this is actually the fifth. Do you see that? Yes, doc. You know, a, 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 a sub-discipline so. called health and health systems. So that is how you think around it. Now, think about it. You know, the health system also affects your health. I mean, the, 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 the type of health system you live in. Like our, our collapsed health system, where if a patient comes with chest pain, in other well-meaning jurisdictions, um, there will be an ECG already available. We, we, we do the ECG, we do cardiac proponents. Within a few minutes, cardiac proponents is here. But here in here in Ghana specifically, I want to be precise, the team, when you order cardiac proponents, it takes three days to come. So the health, is, the health system you are in can affect your health. Now you realize that what other, what other um, sub-disciplines do you think will fall under health and health systems? Not all fall under, but if you reason around it, it makes sense that it concerns your health and health systems. It's your nutrition, isn't it? Yes. In fact, in fact, one can even argue that nutrition should come here. You see that? Nutrition should actually fall under your habits. Am I communicating? Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. 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 So then one can argue that reproductive child health. RCH should be should be here because it talks about what how you manage a uh, mother and child. You have a health system which has put this in place. That's why our health systems, we have family planning units, we have the um ANC, we have the uh, postnatal clinic. All these is our health system that's what established it. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Good. Yaira. Yaira. Can I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Good. Yes, sir. Now, 
if you if you if you study if you really study the definition the definition says that it is the scientific study of the occurrence distribution and determinants of health related events okay among a specified group of people over a specific period of time and the use of this knowledge to control human problems the question is the question is what tools do you think epidemiology will use like if if the if the if the um, epidemiologist says that look i think the infant mortality rate is 10 percent or 10 per uh let's say thousand live birth and i think that i want to use a pie chart to illustrate this when i am doing the presentation which 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 subdiscipline of com health talks about uses that biostatistics Bio so you see that Epidem the epidemiology says that, look, I want to study the health-related events in a community. I want to study the people. So I will use demography to study the people. Now, I also want to study the determinants, what determined that they had the disease. And so I want to use the four H's. I want to use the habitats. So the place that thing happened and the habitat. And I see that, no, this one, he lives in a very bad housing. Um, um, he lives in a very dirty environment. Um, he 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 openly defecates, okay, and then he doesn't dispose his way his waste uh, like like he's supposed to. There is no um 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 environmental health officer to actually um do a post mortem examination of the meat he uses. There is no veterinary uh, officer to actually um do a pre mortem examination of the meat he uses. There is no environmental protection agency to inspect the food. So I want to study his habitat. And so I have to employ environmental health. That is the epidemiologist. Then he says that I also want to study the habits. How does this guy actually live? Is it sedentary or he goes to work? When he goes to work, are there any things in, at the workplace that can affect his health? Like the doctor. When a doctor goes to work, what is he at risk of? He's at risk of maybe very violent patients, psych patients who can just pick up knives and then be choking them. He's at risk of getting pricked uh, by a needle which has been used by an HIV patient or a B patient, he's at risk of having TB. And so, okay, so he's a doctor. So because he's a doctor, that is why he had the TB. He probably may have been exposed to um, um, a TB patient. So I want to study the environment in his work. That is what occupational health. Do you see that? Then he yes, says that, look, I want to study the health systems. In fact, still on the habitat, sorry, the habit, what does the doctor eat? Okay, what does he eat? His food, is it is it well balanced? Then I want to study what? Food and nutrition under public health. Okay, then he asks himself again. Okay, so the doctor lives in Techima. In case he is sick, what would determine whether he would live or he would die? Okay, what are the various health systems available for the doctor? As you know, the doctor lives, does not live in Holy Family. The doctor lives in maybe Hansa. How many clinics would he see before getting to Holy Family? And are, uh, are there traffic, is there a traffic jam from his place to Holy Family? So, I mean, and then his health system, does his insurance work? Okay, which drugs, which drugs are insurance? And can a doctor afford all these things? Okay, so that's the health and health systems. Okay, so the doctor, the doctor's wife maybe wants family planning. The, how many antenatal clinics are there? Okay, how many obstetric emergencies are in Techiman? That if his wife, Maybe it's in labor. She can be rushed there. So you are, you are dealing with the health and health system. So that's what lead the epidemiologist to go and study health and health systems. Are you following? Now, I have studied all these things. These things are just information. They are just what? Qualitative information. But is there a mathematical tool I can use to what? Make sense out of this. What is What mathematics can I use to, uh, I mean, make sense of the knowledge of I have, I, have, I have acquired so that I can say that I'm applying the knowledge I've acquired to what, control the, the problems of the Tetiman people. He uses biostatistics. Do you get it? Yes, Doc. This is the reason why epidemiology is the basic and central. Without epidemiology, there is no com health. 
Again, I called. Yaira. Okay, she's not here. All right. Please, any questions? No, please. Good. So you see that I'm saying that I study, isn't it? I study the 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 health problems. I study the health problems or the health-related problems. So it, it means that I have to use some study designs, isn't it? So this is still under epidemiology, isn't it? So I is, is, oh, who is that? I beg you, if you if you join, kindly mute yourself. Man. He uses study designs. So that is how come you see things like cohort study, case control study, randomized control trials, clinical trials, observational study, cross-sectional study. Have I have I have I uh, painted everything clear in your mind, please? If you are if you are confused, let me know. Because the aim is that you are not going back to study com health giddy 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 again. You have to get this principle. Should I resummarize or um that is okay for you? Hello. Doc, please resummarize. So what I'm saying is that. Epidemiology is the scientific study of the occurrence of diseases. And I'm saying that from the occurrence, you are not going to generate, um, I mean, other sub-disciplines. You are just going to see which topic under epidemiology, which talks about this occurrence. And I'm saying the subtopic in epidemiology which talks about this is what? Measures of morbidity and mortality. That is the incidence rate, the prevalence rate, and all that. Now, it is studying the occurrence and distribution of health-related events. Occurrence distribution. So the distribution, we said is person, place, and time. And we said that if we think about it, we are going to study the person. And the sub-discipline that will help us study the person into so much detail is what? Demography. So here we've then you've generated one subdiscipline, demography. And the place a person finds himself is not his house, it's his environment, broadly. That is environmental health. Okay, so for the environment, when we talk about environmental health, you see that we have home environment, social environment, and work environment. So the work environment is actually what? We'll talk about the occupational health. But that is fine. We'll, we'll look at it somewhere else. But if you still look at it, you see that you can generate everything from here. Now you are dealing with the determinants of what? Health-related events. So I'm saying that the determinants, there are so many models, but the ones that we are very familiar with and we like to use are, is what? The four H's. So for the four H, we have one, habit of the patient. What is the habit of the patient? And I said here, the patient is supposed to go to, I mean, the individual is supposed to go to work. So occupational health. What is your habit? Do you do you about work yourself? Are you sedentary? Occupational health. Here you have what? Nutrition. What food do you eat? Nutrition. Then we said, oh, wait, please wait. We said the next H is actually um habitat. And habitat is what? The surroundings of the what, person. So here you can still have what? Environmental health. And under environmental health, you, you have other subtopics like housing, uh, waste disposal, port health, food safety, um, um, and rodent control, um, in a whole lot of things. And we have not gotten there. But we are just generating the, the various sub-disciplines. Then the next one is what? The health and health systems. So the health system of the patient also determines his health, okay? So this is where you talk about the main topic or the main sub-discipline called health and health systems. And you can even talk about what? Um, reproductive child health here, okay? And we are saying that all these are just English. There is no maths here. So if the 
the, the epidemiologist wants to make sense out of this, he has to use a mathematical tool. And that mathematical tool is actually what? Biostatistics. So he has to what? I think he's taking data, okay? So the data he's taking, the, the demography, how many men, how many men, how many women? So it's that data summarization or taking data is in what? Biostatistics, isn't it? What is the what is data. the age of the patient? It is data. And who, who talks about data? It is not the epidemiologist. It is the biostatistician. So the epidemiologist needs to go and use biostatistics. It means that biostatistics is needed in epidemiology. So everybody in the public uh, health discipline is pointing to epidemiology. So biostatistics. And I'm saying that the study tool that the patient, this is what the, the summarization tool, he takes data, he summarizes, and he interprets it. But the study tool or the study design he would use is also found in epidemiology. So that's why you generate the topic in epidemiology called what? Methods of study designs. So I'm just, I'm just, this, this thing is because of some of you said that you don't, you don't know how to link topics together. And I'm saying that this is how I learn public health. So like if you ask me a question, I can just go and borrow a, a concept in a, environmental health, apply it to epidemiology and then borrow a biostats and then just apply everything works. I don't learn in silos. Then I'm asked, how do I link food safety or food security to climate change? You know that food security is environmental health. Climate change is also in environmental health, but it is under ecology. How do you make the two? If you study it in silos, how do you how can you talk about it? Okay, you are you are being asked that. So, what is the relevance of vital statistics in controlling uh, diseases? Now you see that now they've brought epidemiology and then vital statistics is in demography. You have to link it together and then you have to talk in 10 minutes. So you have to be able to what, link married things because I'm saying that the central science of the public health discipline is actually epidemiology and everybody talks about him. It's like, it's like Jesus Christ, okay? So he's the center and all the other books, Isaiah, John the Baptist will come talk about him. Everybody, everybody's talking about him. You get it? Yes, sir. Good. Then the next thing is what we are saying that is a scientific study of occurrence, distribution, determinants of health related events. So they didn't say diseases, health related events, health related events. So I gave examples, health related events. The one that we are interested in principally is what? Diseases, isn't it? So this is where you learn about the major, the major diseases in, in what? In public health. So we have what? Communicable and non-communicable. So this is where actually communicable diseases fall. So do you see that communicable disease is not a, a, something that stands on, on its own? No, it's actually under epidemiology. But I thought that if I do it like that, it will make the thing very bulky because when I was going through your past questions, I realized that some of the communicable diseases you should really be mindful of. Number one is actually TB. Number one is actually TB. Guess what number two is? Number two is actually schisto. A lot of schisto questions. In fact, I think I, 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 I have been tended uh, the other way around. Number one is actually malaria. I've not finished going through the entire thing, but based on what I've gone through, communicable, you have to know malaria. You have to know schisto. So a lot of questions on schisto. Schistosomiasis. We have to study that. You have to know about TB. You have to know about HIV and AIDS. You have to know about the STIs. Then you have to know about the neglected tropical diseases. So here, you probably need to know about a uh, guinea worm, that is Dracunculus medinensis, Dracunculus. You need to know about lymphatic filariasis, all those things. Okay, I'm not going to list them. I'm, I'm not going to give you a list, but I'm just telling you how they link to epidemiology in the definition of epidemiology. Do you see that? But it is not only communicable diseases. You have to know about the non-communicable ones, okay? Non-communicable ones. 
non-communicable diseases like what? Like hypertension. Doctors, what does the NTD stand for? Ne neglected tropical diseases. All Did right, thank you. Neglected tropical diseases. You can add yeah, scabies, all those things, okay? Poliomyelitis, so all those things are there. You need to know about them. Do you see how yes, all the topics are, are linking together? You, you you are probably wondering, ah, so, 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 so the, so the, so the house supply they brought, which, what is that? Where does it fall? It's actually under communicable diseases. When we are treating for communicable diseases, you see that we have to talk about portal of exit, portal of entry, source, and then vector control. So next time when you go and see picture station where they show you a mouse or a rat, it is under communicable disease. Because you are talking about what vector control, okay? Oh, sorry, um, 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 rodent control. It's here. So you talk about Lassa fever, um, Ebola, and all those things. Talk about yellow fever. You are talking about all those things. You need to know about them. Even if you don't know a lot, you need to know something about them. So the point is that if you if you grasp where the public health discipline is going, you know the things to focus on. I mean, you can't go there. You let me, you let me continue. You you see what, what I'm talking about. You need to know about DM. You need to know about um. Okay, so let's end here. Hypertension, diabetes. You see that? Then guess what? It is not diseases are not the only what the only health related events. We have other events that affect. You have other events that affect what the health, like what female genital mutilation. FGM, like what? Streetism, like domestic violence, like overcrowding. Overcrowding affects health, so you see that they will, they will, they will, they, will, they will put they will put um they will put um high people in the room and they they just show you the picture. What, how do you describe this phenomenon? Or how do you term this phenomenon? Overcrowding. What are some of the diseases? You see that it's epidemiology. Although it talks about housing in environmental health, you see that eventually they are just talking about epidemiology. You are asking yourself, what is the occurrence and frequency, sorry, what is the occurrence and distribution and determinants of what? Overcrowding among these people. And how can you use it to control human problems? That is all we are asking. So you just think about any any health related event, FGM. So you don't you are not surprised that they are, you are being shown FGM. You are, you are not even surprised that, uh, for example, you are shown um a group of school children walking through water, going to school. What condition do you think that they are going to talk about? I know I I know I have not given you the full picture, but you, you should guess. You have a group of. Okay, let me let me let me. Show. Let me, let me, let me, let me, what, what, uh-huh. What, what? She's two, yes. Health related events, don't be surprised. They show you a picture of Hamatan season. Then you ask yourself, ah, but what has Hamatan season got? No, it's a health related event. It can cause respiratory tract infections. It's a health related event, yes. You are shown bush fire. You are shown open defecation open dumping, ocean dumping. All these are health-related events. So although they are in environmental health, they will come knocking on the door of epidemiology. Do you see that? Have I created that picture in your head? Yes, sir. Now you are studying this and application to what? Prevent, control, and prevent human problems. So this is where you learn about the levels of prevention. So traditionally, you know, you have basically you have three, but some people make it as more as many as five. So we have primordial prevention, isn't it? Yes, sir. You have primary prevention. You have secondary prevention. 
you have tertiary prevention. I just want to create this thing in your head so that when you go to the unmanned picture station or, for example, the Com Health Viva, and you are asked a question, and they don't, not about thing is difficult. Once you, you understand the concept, just link them together and generate your own answers. No answer is wrong in public health. That is the truth. You score the marks there. But if you are waiting to, to say that, oh, I should have seen this, or Dr. Kofi should have mentioned this, it won't work for you because as, as you can see, the Com Health, anytime they go, they get surprises. First, it, it was about it was about um um food security and climate change. Then it will be about what? Uh, 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 vital statistics and then socioeconomic development. You just okay, vital statistics. I know it's bad immigration and all socioeconomic development. Okay, so if you are talking of bad, what 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 about bad can 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 affect? Okay, so if you have um a high bed weight, you are going to give birth to a, a lot of children and you are going to give, increase the dependency ratio and then that is going to put a burden on the economy. Do you get it? It's not written in any book. Oh. Hello? Yes, uh, doc. Yes, doc. Yo. Then you are thinking of a, a migration. Okay, so let's take, for example, how the doctors and then the nurses are migrating out. So we are losing human personnel. So what will happen? We'll have a, a poor health system and that is what's going to affect the health of, of the individual because the individual goes to the hospital the doctors are not there even even if they are there one doctor is seeing like 20 patients and so the quality of care will come down and so that will increase the maternal mortality rate infant mortality rate and that will cause what loss of and then you can talk of a lot of things okay and so because of that the health status of the environment or, or of the nation will eventually go down and when they are sick Productivity is decreased. When productivity is decreased, they can't go to work. Once they are not productive, the social economic development will be stalled. Okay, so I'm going to ask someone how can I answer them. It's all the call. But when you're on your way, I'll see you. I'm doing a slide bank. Don't do that in community health. It doesn't work that way. Say medicine, they are fine. A surgery, they are fine. But community health, a social studies. Then, ordinary. Um. Prevention. Is that okay? Yes, doc. Good. So, let's see something. Who can define um, epidemiology for me? Yes, I want to continue the lecture. You just read your notes. Read your notes. Yes, doc. The epidemiology is the scientific study of the occurrence, distribution, and determinants of health-related events among a specified population over a specific period and the application of this study to prevent and control human problems. So the key term is distribution. So based on this, we can classify epidemiology into two main groups. Classification of epidemiology. Let's go there. Please, is the lecture boring? Because I know I know public health is. I'm trying to make it as interesting as I can. But Charlie, I know that that's how it is. Okay, here you see that you are not you are not diagnosing, you are not doing investigation, so you are you are yawning. I know that Irifa, for example, has yawned like this a ten time. But I mean that is how it is. It is what it is. Okay. So what is how how do you classify epidemiology? We have what. Descriptive epidemiology. What does it do? It's it what it describes the the population under study, isn't it? And how does it describe it? It describes it into what person characteristics, place characteristics, and then what time. You get it. Yes, yes. That is descriptive epidemiology. Descriptive epidemiology. Then we have analytical epidemiology. So this one is what talks about the distribution. So what do you think analytical epidemiology would do? To, to, to talk about what the, the determinants, isn't it? So it is analyzing by asking why and how. 
So it analyzes the description, the descriptive epidemiology was as what has given. And then it generates answers. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is how the epidemiology uh, epidemiologist solves his problem. He sees a health-related event. What does he do first? Does he describe or he analyzes? What does he do first? Does he describe or he analyzes? Analyze. Hey, are you sure? Are you sure? He sees a health, he describes first. Hmm? You are, yes, you are an epidemiologist. You go and then you find maybe rape cases. I go to analyze it. You have to describe. Okay? You have to describe. So first, you see a health-related event. Then the first thing that comes is a descriptive epidemiology. Descriptive epidemiology. So, person characteristics, isn't it? Who, who are usually raped? So the person characteristics. So you want to know who are usually raped. The sex, okay, so it's females. Okay. Age. Those in their teenagers, okay? So do you see what the epidemiologist is doing? He goes and he collects what? Data. So how many of you have been raped? All of you come. All of those who come, there is no male. All of them are females. So person, okay, I realize that females are raped. And then how old are you? 14, you, 15, 14, 13, um, 19, 18, 17, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 19, 19, 19, 15, 16, 16, 16. So he sees that, oh, okay, so they are teenagers. What is their ethnicity? Take that information. So oh, maybe uh, some of them are accounts. Do you see that is demography? Do you see that? Yes. Sir. Some of them are Evers. Some of them are gas. And it appears that accounts are more. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Person characteristics. Uh, what is their religion? That's still on the person, isn't it? So they are, they are Christians. Let's say they are Christians. Or let's say um, most of them are Christians. Some are Muslims. Then let's say he continues. Uh, he gets his person. Then the thing is, now place. Where does it happen? Then you see, you give some questionnaires. Did it occur at home? Oh, okay, so some occurred at home. Some occurred on the farm. Some occurred at clubs. Do you see what he's doing? Yes, sir. Time. Then he wants to find out, maybe, is it the daytime or night or afternoon? And he, and he realizes that most of them occur at night. A few occur in the afternoon. And a few occur maybe in the morning. So he describes the case. So I've come to see rape case. And then this is my description. I've seen that is teenage females who are usually involved, and then most of them are Christian accounts, and then um, uh, most of them are say blood group O. That is, if 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 the that parameter is relevant to his study, most of them are what blood group O plus. Okay, and then most of them are not married. Okay, most of them are not married. Most of them are maybe the firstborns of their fathers, okay? And then most of them are students. So that's occupation, isn't it? And those are yes. person characteristics. Then the place, we realize that most of them occurred in, uh, um, at, uh, in, in uh, I mean, at home. A few of them occurred on the farms. Most of them also occurred at the club. And then it usually occurred at night. So he gives you what, a descriptive data. Now that he has described it, now he wants to find out. Let's analyze it. Why, why is it that teenage girls are the ones getting getting raped? Why is it not males? 
Then he analyzes it. Okay, maybe the meals, the meals, the meals, the meals cannot be raped because, I mean, for obvious reasons. Maybe it's because of culture. The meals feel like they can't be raped or maybe the meals who are raped, they don't want to come out and say it because they feel like on their bare man and your man. So, okay, he analyzes it. So, what, how and why were they raped? Was it because they were in mini skirts? Then he starts what, analyzing it. So, my point is that Descriptive epidemiology comes before analytical epidemiology because you are first studying the word occurrence. So you see the occurrence, you are asking yourself, what is the prevalence? Is there any data which talks about the prevalence of rape in the community? And what is the incidence? How, how many new cases have you had recently? You see that? Then he analyzes, he uses study designs, okay? Like cohort studies. So all of these are cohorts. So the cohorts, what do they have in common? Where, um, and what happened, what happened at the time of rape? Did they were they were they dragged were they hypnotized or uh, uh, were I mean were they were they are uh, 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 I mean were they are villains their boyfriends was it their stepfathers I mean how did they okay so he's just asking himself how 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 then he would have to use biostatistics to collect the data everything and then what interpret it using the chi square using um um, um the t test score using uh, calculating the confidence interval and everything, then he will come out and say that, look, this is what I found. I found out that this and this and this and this. So I'm recommending some some uh, community health measures. I think that those who are those 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 who are um, involved in the rape, I think you should prosecute them. I think that you should build police stations here. I think that you should create a law. That that will criminalize all those things. Do you see what he's doing? So he first comes to what to know the occurrence. Maybe as much as a rape, rape in the doors of power, what is the prevalence rate? Recently, what is what the incidence rate? And as you will see, we'll talk about the difference between incidence and prevalence. Okay, fine. Now you've given to me. Now let me see how many of them were raped. All of you come, if they will come, come. Okay, what is your name? That's your initials. You give them questionnaires, like what you've been doing, your project work you were doing. Give them questionnaires, let them fail. Name. Initials, AK, sex, no I take it. By the time I'm maybe no I questionnaires need now, then you'll be analyzing them. You get the beauty of the discussion. Yes, doc. Yes, Thank doc. you. Thank you. So I'm going to name this 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 uh, file as introduction to epidemiology. So the next file will be history of epidemiology. Now I want to talk about this because um most often times you see that they would like what I just one of the questions I just showed you, one of the fathers of epidemiology is, so because of that, we just need to know some prominent people in epidemiology. Is that okay? Yes, doc. Before, yes, before, before I end it, any questions? Excellent. Okay, so I'm, I'm continuing.